Without a proper build or useful equipment, Dark Souls can be quite the pain in the buttocks. So I made you a list of good starting weapons, where to get them and how to use them. I'm also throwing in some useful starting tips that will help you start this epic journey. I mean, I don't want you to give up on the game. You would totally miss out on getting your ass handed to you by Onsen and Smoke. To really enjoy the complexity of Dark Souls combat mechanics and the game in general, you will need to find your own rhythm and pace, your own playstyle. To be honest, it took me about two months of trial and error, which resulted in a few more months where I didn't touch the game and a few tutorial videos to really get me started. You see, finding a set playstyle can be pretty difficult if you die over and over again to the first few enemies and bosses. And this shit will happen if you don't know what you are doing. For example, the first real boss in the game, the gargoyles, are pretty much impossible for a newcomer if you have a shitty weapon. So I'm going to give you a quick rundown of useful starting weapons and what attributes you should level to use them to the full potential. So pick the one that sounds the most interesting to you. But keep in mind, these are weapons that I found useful and may not necessarily fit your playstyle. There are also many more viable starting weapons and these are just the strongest and easiest to get in my opinion. And keep in mind, this is not a blueprint how to play the game. These are merely suggestions. Do yourself a favor and try many different weapons, combat strategies and equipment combinations. Let's start off with the character classes. Character classes in Dark Souls do not work like those in most other RPGs. Your character can use every weapon and spell that you want. You only have to make sure he has the necessary stats. This also means your starting class has not necessarily a huge impact on your playstyle. Just think of whatever class you want to play and see in which of these categories it fits the most. Just don't start with a class that is heavily based on magic, trust me. Strength build. Think of a warrior or a knight or even a barbarian if you will. For this build you should mainly level the strength attribute of your character so you can use heavy and hard hitting weapons to their full potential and probably some points in endurance so you can wear heavier gear and vitality so you have more HP. Dexterity build. Think of a thief, a ninja or assassin or maybe even a hunter. Here you want to mainly level the dex attribute, so you can maximize the damage output while using quick and versatile weapons. And depending on weapon and playstyle, you may also want to set a few points in endurance, because this also determines your stamina, which is used by attacking and dodging. And the quality build. This is more like an all-round build, maybe for a monk or even a cleric or a melee focused ranger. In this build, you want to level your strength and dexterity to a certain point, because some weapons scale with both stats. This could also be a good base for a miracle user or a combat mage, because then you would spread your points between strength, dex and faith, or strength, dex and intelligence, respectively. Keep in mind though, quality characters often really bloom in the mid or end game, and could be hard to handle in the early game. So pick the build that tickles your fancy and then choose a starting class that is fitting attribute points. Now let's talk about weapon damage scaling. Before you can really decide which build fits what weapon, you have to understand how weapon scaling works, or at least the very basics of that. Weapon scaling is a rather complex topic, but I'm going to try my best to describe it in a few sentences. For more details on the subject, Look at one of the many, many Wikipedia articles. So most weapons have these letters associated to their stats. The closer this letter is to A, the better it scales, or S for the best scaling. Now, for every point you have on that stat that is over the required value to actually wield the weapon, you do some bonus damage, which is accumulated to the base damage of the weapon. So weapons with great scaling values but low base damage are only really worth it if you have the necessary stats. 
If you are still low level, stick to a weapon with a good base damage and don't think much about scaling. Here's another not so well known fact about strength requirements. This first stat shown on this weapon shows you how much strength you need to actually wield a weapon. Well, duh. But two handing a weapon gives you 50% more strength. So if your weapon has a strength requirement of 24, you can two hand a weapon as soon as you have 16 strength. Well, let's get to the interesting parts, the weapons. I'm going to show you how to get the weapon on screen and talk a bit about the benefits and how to use them. Let's kick it off with the ass stock. This is probably the easiest weapon to get and perfect if you want to build a fencer type character. This one is pretty good at keeping your enemies at a distance and safely picking the health away. The damage is not too amazing, especially if you fight against bosses, but you can use gold pine resin to counter that. So make sure to get the master key as a starting gift at the start of the game. It is also recommended to upgrade a weapon as soon as possible. To find out how to do this early on, click here. To wield a weapon you need 10 strength and 12 dexterity. So the hunter would be a good starting class. The Swyhander is also a pretty easy weapon to get and when it comes to dealing damage, definitely one of the better weapons in the game. But at the expense of speed and versatility. If you want to make a strength based character, you can keep this weapon for a big portion of the game, especially if you upgrade a weapon as soon as you have the necessary items. And you can use this weapon pretty early on if you're two handed, but you are pretty vulnerable if you do so. You want like with every other slow hitting weapon, strategically time every move and attack. But once you learn the moveset of it, this weapon is a trustworthy companion. To wield a weapon you need 24 strength and 10 dexterity. So I would recommend a warrior or a bandit class. One of the more exotic weapons is a Stora Straight Sword. This one also needs a bit of precision to get without dying. But even if you get it and die, you're gonna keep it obviously, so never mind. But you definitely need the master key as a starting gift to get this weapon early. This one is a pretty good weapon on its own, but it really, really shines if you're going to make a cleric type character that can use miracles. Because then you can put points on faith and it will still benefit the damage of your weapon. Especially for players who have problem dodging enemies attacks, this one is amazing. You can use the cleric starting class, get a starting healing spell and even more spells throughout the game and keep yourself alive for a pretty long time. When it comes to its moveset, this weapon is pretty straightforward. It doesn't have a particularly long range, but if you pair it with a good shield, the grass crest shield for example, you could get very close to an enemy and wreck their shit. This weapon needs 10 strength, 10 dexterity and 14 faith. Like I already mentioned, the cleric class would be a good starting class, but you could use the deprived as well. The Claymore The Claymore is just an all around useful weapon and with a requirement of 16 strength and 10 dexterity pretty fergal too. And it also lays in plain sight on the way to the gargoyles anyway. But you have to kill a Taurus team to get this weapon, so take that into consideration. When it comes to its moveset, it is nothing out of the ordinary, but it is more than enough to get through a big portion of the game. It has a decent range. It is not too slow and has some swinging attacks that are useful if you are surrounded by enemies. In my opinion, this weapon is perfect. If you seek out a strength or dex weapon later in the game, then you can take the claymore, level the stats for your future weapon and the claymore will probably still work. But it is still totally possible to beat the whole game just with a claymore. Especially if you keep the weapon upgraded, which is rather cheap because it only uses normal titanite, which you can buy at a blacksmith and if you use resin on your weapon. But in the later game you will definitely have a harder time than for example with his Swyhander. Like I already mentioned, this weapon needs 16 strength and 10 dexterity, so you could pretty much use whatever class you want.
Looking for a great weapon? Here's to great club. Talking about the Swihander, the even bigger brother of the Swihander is the great club. One of my favorite weapons in the game and probably the strongest weapon to get early on. But you'll also need the master key to get this weapon early. This thing hits like a train and if used correctly you can wreck early bosses in just a few swings. But keep in mind you will need 28 strength to wield this weapon in one hand and it's pretty pretty slow too. So if you miss an enemy you are pretty vulnerable to counterattacks. If you fight patiently and strategically though and are willing to learn the moveset and its timings you can easily beat the game with this weapon. Well, easily in 20 quotation marks. But the fact it has a B scaling in strength and even gets an A scaling if you upgrade it beyond plus 10 makes the damage potential even bigger the further you get in the game and the more points you invest in strength. Like I mentioned, to wield this weapon in one hand you need 28 strength. So I would recommend the Bandit class. The Greyflord Swords Getting the Greyflord Sword can be difficult for a newcomer, but if you try hard enough you'll eventually succeed. Though you should definitely get yourself a homeward bone before you try. Or you could just die or use the Dark Sun to get out, that's up to you. All you have to do is get to the catacombs, drop from a certain ledge, pick up the eyes of death, get into the coffin and voila. This sword's moveset is definitely a bit more on the complex side compared to the other weapons I mentioned so far. But it also deals toxic damage and has good base damage. Think of it as a slow short saber with a strong thrusting attack. If you want to use this sword you should get used to its moveset. It is easy to miss an enemy and get counter attacked. This weapon is also not that good with later bosses because of their immunity to toxin, but in the early game this is a real powerhouse and fun to play around with. To wield the weapon you need 24 strength and 13 dexterity. I would recommend a warrior or a bandit. The Drake Swords. Getting the Drake Sword can also be pretty tricky, even if you know what you're doing. But with a little trick and small amounts of preparation, you can do it. We start a little introduction, as you saw, at the Undead Berg Bonfire. To see how to get there, watch the tutorial on how to get the Claymore. From here, you have to kill the Taurus Demon and get to the Hellkite Drake. And now all you have to do is to cut the tail of the Drake. Well, that's easier said than done, but this video would not include the sword if there wasn't a newcomer friendly way to do it, even though it may take a while. So get to the undead merchant in Undeadburg and get yourself a bow and around 90 to 100 wooden arrows. They are pretty cheap, so don't be stingy. Make sure you have the required stats to actually wield the bow. Then get under the bridge where the Hellkite track lurks and start shooting at its tail. After every hit the dragon starts flying but lands again after a short while. And after around 40 to 60 hits the tail should be cut off and you receive the Drake Sword. In my opinion it is really worth the effort because in the early sections of the game this sword is the baller. Low requirements and a very nice base damage makes it an awesome starting weapon. But the complete lack of scaling makes it weaker and weaker the further you progress in the game. This sword has a fast moveset, does decent base damage and with your two handed R2 you also have a range attack at your hand. But be careful with that. Every attack costs you 30 durability. To wield a weapon you need 16 strength and 10 dexterity. But most classes can get these stats very easily. You could pick the warrior or bandit because they have already good stats but pick whatever you want. Okay. So we're done with the weapons, let's talk about rings. If you play a melee focused character, most rings do not benefit you greatly. But you get two ring slots, might as well use them. In most of my playthroughs I get Haval's ring 
and the Ring of Favor and Protection, or short Fab Ring. They mostly benefit your equipment load, so you can wear heavier gear without mid or fed rolling so easily. You get the Havel's Ring from, surprise, Haval. He lurks at the bottom of one of the towers in Undead Burg. But you have to kill him to get his ring, which could prove to be difficult. But if you manage to predict his attacks and manage to backstab him a few times, you'll eventually succeed. Wearing the ring raises your maximum equipment load by 50%, so it kinda scales with your endurance stat. To get the Fab Ring, you need to kill Gargles first and then return to Firelink Shrine. There you find Knight Lordric, just sitting there all nilly-willy. But you have to kill him too to get his ring. Or you could just kick him through this conveniently placed hole in the wall right behind him. Exit the game and reload it again to make his loot appear. And there we go. This ring increases your maximum health, stamina and equipment load by 20%. But beware. If you ever unequip the ring, it will break and vanish from your inventory. Let's talk about shields. There are many different shields with varying stats all over the game. But a good all-rounder shield just needs a good damage reduction, which determines how much percent physical damage of an attack you will receive when you block it. Ideally between 85 and 100% and the stability stat, which determines how much stamina is used by blocking an attack. A decent stability is around 60. Normally, the higher those stats are, the heavier the shield gets, but I would advise you to use a light or normal sized shield. And boy, do I have a shield for you, the Grass Crest Shield. With a 95% physical damage reduction and a stability of 51 at a weight of 3.0, it is okay, nothing out of the ordinary, but the fact that it has a passive stamina regen bonus makes it really, really worth it. And you can get it right from the beginning of the game. All you need is the master key. But if you really, really don't care about shields and also don't want to make the effort to get the cross crest shield, there is a real lightweight shield for you, directly at the start of Undead Berg. And even though it seems kinda unimpressive at first, and most players will probably toss it aside like garbage, the wooden shield is an awesome grab. It only weighs 1.5, has a physical defense of 93% and a stability of 52. It is also the lightest normal shield in the game. And as a little bonus tidbit, I'm going to show you how to get to the blacksmith right from the beginning of the game. Normally, you would have to kill the Taurus demon and sneak past the Hellkite Drake. But with the master key, you can get there right from the start. You just have to sneak past a few normal enemies. Well, and one black knight. At the blacksmith, you can buy normal weapons, upgrade your current ones, or I don't know, just chat with him. You can buy normal titanite shards for 800 souls, with which you can upgrade most normal weapons to plus 5 at a cost of 200 souls per upgrade. The first two upgrades cost one shard each, plus 3 and plus 4, two shards each, and to get to plus 5, you need three shards. After that, you'll need large titanite but you'll have to find these in the game or buy them at a later point in the game from another merchant. Whenever you have massive problems with the boss, try upgrading your weapon as much as possible. Wow, well, that was a lot of information. I hope you found some of it to be useful. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and if you have friends that have also starting problems with the Dark Souls, feel free to share this video with them. If you have questions or suggestions for future tutorial videos, just leave them in the comment section down below. See you in the next video and praise the sun!